Greetings and salutations to all you folks out there. So today we're going to be doing something a little bit different. I'm going to have a game playing in the background and basically Bella and I are going to converse. Call it a ramble time, call it a discussion, call it what you will. I don't know how it's going to turn out and I need you guys to tell us because I have no idea what's going to happen. What's going to happen is that we're going to make everybody angry because we're super opinionated about things and you're all going to hate us and there's going to be a firestorm in the comments, but that's okay. Because firestorms are fun. <laughs> that's the best part of life is trolling each other in the comments section. So let's right. get on with this. So as a lot of you know, we are relatively newlyweds. What, about a month and a half? Yeah. Yes, month and a half, six weeks, somewhere around in there. So basically this past month, we have been moving into a new house and we have been adulting very hard. I have never adulted like this before. <laughs> <laughs> By which he means eating real meals and coming home and not flopping down in front of the computer to play subcom all night and having to deal with a yard. That was a first. <laughs> like it's been a year, at least a year since I've done lawn work. And so I come home and I break out the weed eater and I go until the battery goes dead in the yard, which I was actually very impressed by. The weed eater I got's pretty awesome. Here comes the first rabbit trail. Uh, <laughs> I got an electric Men weed eater. Men and their toys. I got an electric weed eater for the first time. It's the first non-gas one I've ever had. And I was actually super impressed with it because it was very strong and it went for like 35 or 40 minutes without dying. But anyway, let's kill that rabbit and get back on topic. Anyway, um... <laughs> So, yeah, adult life is weird. Like You do a full day of work, and then you come home, and you cook supper, and then you get done with supper, and you wash the dishes, and then you unpack, and then you clean. <laughs> and then... Don't make it sound so boring. We do do fun stuff, but it, it's nice. Like, there's a good routine to it, and it feels good to have your own house, and there are awesome things that happen. But then all of a sudden you sit down at the end of the day and it's like, holy cow, I got like 12 hours of work done today, had a decent adult conversation over dinner, and now I'm going to bed at a reasonable hour without staying up till 1 a.m. playing video games. When did I grow up? <laughs> <laughs> and we have our own house now, and I'm married, and I have a professional job, and I'm in grad school, and people still meet me and go, you look like you're 12. I can't believe it. Well, that's your own fault because you skipped your growth spurt. The, I can't I help have that. literally no control over that. I know, but still. <laughs> For those of you who have not seen her standing up, what, five foot four, yes. 96 pounds? Yes. Teeny tiny little itty bitty thing. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> However that goes. So anyway, I have been out of school for a very long time. Um, I took basically two years but didn't actually get a degree. And I've been working, so I've been working for a very long time. And Belle, Belle, on the other hand, would be happy being a professional student for the rest of her life. Pretty much. Well, it's kind of a funny thing because you were an English major for a yes. four-year degree. But you've probably made the best use out of your major, of any <laughs> English major I've ever seen. So, there is that. But, um, basically, you are continuing to read to astounding lengths. <laughs> And just mowing through piles of books. Not quite piles. <laughs> Literal lines. piles. No. Okay. No. no, you don't understand. There is a two <laughs> foot tall pile of books on the dresser that she is gradually going through. And this is one trip to the library. <laughs> uh, okay. Right now, I'm not in a good sequence, but I'm averaging about two to three books a week, which is relatively normal for me. Which is mowing through piles of books. In addition to, like, <laughs> probably a hundred articles a week. I don't actually know. It's probably well, more than a hundred. some of that. But lots of that, too. too. So. Well, I do lots of it just for fun, but... <laughs> anyway... So there is lots of reading going on, and we got into this discussion the other day about Shakespeare because we I've heard a couple of times this comment on the radio. I can't remember who said it, but basically there was a professor at some university that said he refused to teach Shakespeare anymore because he's just some dead old white guy, and why should we care when there's so much rich culture everywhere else in the world? 
And this is a raging argument. You can find tons of articles about it online as professors and non-professors and all kinds of people share their opinions about the fact that Shakespeare shouldn't be taught and it doesn't enrich anyone's life and no one understands him anymore and blah, blah, blah. 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 Okay. That's exactly... That's the quote. I mean, apparently... We're, that's, that's, that's an exact apparently quote. Apparently we're citing peanuts here, but it's totally <laughs> fine. Actually, if we're adulting very hard, <laughs> technically we're going wah, 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 wah. Yeah. Anyway, it, it's a weird argument to me. Because from my point of view, everyone talks about protecting their cultural heritage and learning about their past and doing everything that they can to enhance their own lifestyle and to be who they want to be and that kind of thing. And bundled into that is learning about the culture that you come from. And Shakespeare is a very integral part of English culture. And whether you're in America or the UK or any English speaking language, a lot of the wordings that we have in our language and a lot of the stories that we have have been interpreted by or brought to being through Shakespeare. So to ignore Shakespeare is kind of stupid to be okay, honest. The way I put it is like teaching a literature, well it's not just one class, but if you go through a literature curriculum and manage to not teach Shakespeare at all, it's like if you took a US history class and didn't talk about the American Revolution. Pretty much. And it's a much deeper, okay, strong feelings about this, so minor rant here. It's a much deeper question than that, because it goes down to what is the point of teaching literature. And I had a friend the other day when we were talking about this, and he said that the point of teaching literature is teaching communication, which is sort of partially true, but it's not all of that. So if you take your regular high school literature c curriculum, so, you know, four years of high school English, you're teaching, <laughs> you're not just teaching communication, you're also teaching people how to write, but you're teaching them a history of who is significant in literature. And Shakespeare is a huge part of that. So if yes. you think about it, most high school curriculums only require like one Shakespeare play. One. And they normally pick the easy ones, like Macbeth or Hamlet or Romeo and Juliet, which is the stupidest thing ever to teach to high schoolers. But they normally pick something like that. And, okay, yes, the language... So this, this was a minor is, rant? Yes, this is a minor rant. <laughs> the language is difficult for high schoolers. It's difficult for most people. But if you have a decent teacher, and if you have a really good text where it's glossed well, i.e., they have lots of explanations of what the words actually mean. Um, the the themes are still very relevant to today's society. Like you teach Macbeth or you teach Hamlet. The whole to be or not to be soliloquy in Hamlet is completely about suicide. Like he's literally trying to decide whether he's gonna throw himself off the top of the castle or not. And that's very relevant to today's high schoolers. And that's not actually super common knowledge because that gets glossed over so much. It's like one of those quotes that have been ground into paste through repetition and just completely lost all meaning. And like suicide is a really relevant topic to today's world. I mean, with the rates of depression the way they are and the rates of suicide the way they are in a lot of countries, I mean, we would do well to be reading things like that and learning from them. Right, so, and, and if you just take Hamlet, like he also has to deal with the fact that his father has died and his mother has remarried, and okay, it's a little more complicated than that because there's like murder and incest and other things involved, but these can't are- Can't have Shakespeare without murder and incest. <laughs> right, I know. But these are legitimate <laughs> things that our high schoolers are dealing with, so it's not irrelevant. Legitimate dealing just, with murder and incest. Well, I mean, some of them are. Um, <laughs> This is true. But, this is true. <laughs> but it's the whole argument that Shakespeare doesn't matter in our society anymore, I think, is too simple. And it's just that maybe teachers aren't teaching it well, and that people aren't willing to give it the effort to try to understand it, where I, I think it can be really useful in English curriculum. Well, still. That kind of goes along with the whole thing today with people not having very long attention spans. I mean, 
Yeah. Let's okay, face it. A Shakespeare play does take a long time to read. I will give you that. Let's face it. We're in the age of if your YouTube video is longer than five minutes, ninety percent of the people watching it are gonna click out by minute four. Okay, but don't so. get, don't get me started on that rant. We should just yeah. We should move on to something else. Yeah, let's do that. Oh. <laughs> um, <laughs> so this is a discussion topic that has been beaten. Okay, this horse <laughs> has been ridden into the dirt, beaten to death with sticks. Someone came in and performed CPR on it, and then they proceeded to drown it and then beat it to death with piranhas, eating your the flesh off the bones. Your cliche is deader than your horse is. I'm not even sorry. <laughs> <laughs> the Confederate flag. We're uh, in South Carolina. And this has to be mentioned because I don't know. I don't even know why. I don't know why we're talking about it. Because we grew up in the Deep South, and this is the only thing that's been on the news nearby. Yes. And I, oh, it was my just. Goodness. Okay, legitimately, though, it was one of those things that I wasn't sure how Brink felt about it. So there was, like, the first couple of days this came up in the news. That because I kind apparently, of did, I'm an uncultured well, dick. No, that is not what I said. <laughs> I just didn't know how he felt about it. So I did come home one day, and it was kind of like, so, how do you feel about this whole Confederate flag thing? <laughs> that was literally, that was verbatim what she said. It was like, we're sitting over dinner, and just out of the blue, so. <laughs> anyway, how I feel is, I'm going to go off into my little conspiracy theory, co conspiracy theory <laughs> corner here, no. and talk about the fact that when there was no rioting in the streets after the church shooting, we didn't hear anything else about it. Basically, everyone moved when there was no conflict, and they went, oh, look, there was a Confederate flag on that guy's Facebook page, and there's a Confederate flag on the state building. How dare you? How dare you fly a monument to slavery? Tear it down! And so, yeah, that happened. And I feel like it was a total redirect because this is kind of a non-issue. Basically, you have a few people that fly the Confederate flag and 99% of the few people that fly the Confederate flag do it as a fashion statement. They literally have no idea what it means. I saw someone yesterday <laughs> in a truck flying both the Don't Tread on Me flag and the Confederate flag. So with one flag on each side of the truck, they're saying... Stick together, unite the states, we have to stand up to the people oppressing us. And then with the other flag, they're saying, split the states, the states themselves are in oppression. And It's an overreaction. <laughs> I mean, there are always going to be people who are prejudiced, but for the most part, like he said, it's just a fashion statement. It's a southern culture thing. It's just the way you say that you're from the South and you're proud and it of it. it exacerbates the issue to try to take it away because right. people view it as it is called the rebel flag. Like the rebel flag, the meaning of that name has surpassed the term assigned to, oh, this was the flag of the rebels of the South. So to me, it doesn't even mean what it did anymore. And so basically you have one group of idealists fighting against something that doesn't exist anymore in the minds of the people that are flying it. And so one group is fighting for it because it's the symbol of rebels and the other group fighting against it because it's the symbol for slavery and both of them are essentially wrong. So there is not ever going to be a good conclusion to this. My personal opinion is that it belongs in a museum, but it's not the government's right to tell you that you can't fly it. So, well, I mean, the whole South Carolina issue, if you haven't been up on this news, they were petitioning to have it removed because there is a Confederate flag on the, I think, Capitol grounds. Um, but it's behind the building it's, on a pole. It's half on the a height. war memorial. Yes. It's like it's on a Civil War memorial. You're basically in a museum. Yeah, basically. So, anyway, so <laughs> let's, let's drag the horse away and put it away. <laughs> Burn it, Done do whatever we need to do. The Confederate flag issue just needs to go away because I'm sick and tired of hearing people, about it. People just have to have something to be angry about. Pretty much. That's Speaking of angry, <laughs> let's go back to the conspiracy theory corner. Okay. I read this little article the other day. It was in, I, uh, I can't remember the name of the website. I should have written it down because I want to go back and read it for the hilarity factor. Just Google it. 
I could probably Google it. You can Google, Google it. knows everything. Google knows everything. Speaking of Google knowing everything, this conspiracy theory is about the Chrome browser. I told you about this yes, the other day. You remember is. this. Um, okay, so That there's... was not a planned segue. I just wanted to point out we're just that good. This was like the most harebrained, misquoted, <laughs> just off-the-wall conspiracy theory that I've read, and it's about a web browser. So basically, Chrome issued an update where they brought their voice recognition software to the Chrome browser. And these people had a freaking conniption over this. They were using the terminology of, so the Chrome who is in association with DARPA and the Department of Defense and all of these other federal ties has downloaded a black box to your computer which has the ability to listen in on any conversation that you're having and it will record everything that you say and this is basically the man intruding into your house and anytime your computer's on, the microphone's on and they record everything that you say. Which is just ludicrous. I was getting there. Anyway, so basically they're quoting a guy who is misquoting an article about Google pulled from another website that doesn't like Google. But so everything got, on the internet is true. Yes, you've got fourth party information that has been misquoted at least twice. Basically, the reality of the situation is Chrome updated. So if you go to the options, there's an option for voice search and it has on and off, and it's default set to off. And if you turn it on, if you choose to turn it on, anytime you say, okay, Google, while there's a microphone plugged into your PC, it opens the voice search, and then it records anything after that and voice searches it. So you have to say, okay, Google, and more importantly, you have to turn it on. Well, where these guys got this information from is the Chromium browser. It is a third-party browser that claims no complete compatibility with Chrome. And that widget just so happens to automatically turn on in the browser that's not made by Google. And that's it. That, that's the entire extent of the issue. And it just blew my mind that somehow you could have an amalgamation of like 20 something conspiracy theory articles written about a failure of a third party application for Google. Brink still marvels at the stupidity of people, whereas I have long ago come people to terms with it and I just laugh. People are stupid. I, I worked at fast food job in high school and since then, people are stupid has been kind of my motto about life. Which isn't, most people have worked Which fast isn't food. as mean as it sounds. It actually just makes me much more accepting. Like, when I hear random conspiracy theories like that, whereas Brink is like, oh my word, how can these people believe these things? I I'm like just like, outraged, eh, okay? people are stupid. Okay, I would make a really good conservative talking head. Nope. Because Don't I get do it. super Don't outraged do it. over stupid stuff. And it's kind of fun. I'm not I actually serious about it. I won't let it. him be a conservative talk show host. I... I what? You don't want me to go all Rush Limbaugh? No. I have the ego. I mean... I have the sadistic I would, streak. I would threaten to divorce you over this, but we know uh, I'm not going to do that. So I'll yeah, lock you in the closet. Okay. Take away my microphone. Yes. Cut the cord. It's not going to happen. Do something. It's not going to happen. Anyway, I like getting angry about things. Not even literally angry. I like arguing against stuff that he I see as stupid. being loud. And I overstate it. Yes, I've always been loud. Okay, the most commonly used phrase of your childhood was... Brink, use your inside voice. I cannot tell you. At least, at least a dozen times per day that came out of my mother's mouth. Which makes us perfectly paired because part of our, like, free video is adjusting the microphone four different times so that you can actually pick up my voice. Yeah, but, I mean, we talk roughly equal amounts, so it kind of works out in the end. It's just a different volume level. It is a totally different, well, and my voice carries. I guess, yes. Maybe, just yeah. a little. Yeah. Yeah. You have a bigger mouth than I do. Literally. This is true. I'm figuratively. <laughs> okay, whatever. Anyway, 
I think that was everything I had on my list. I like my comments on that. I wrote this like a week ago because we were moving and we didn't get a chance to do this video. And my comment is, conspiracy of the day, Chrome is spying on you. It's like even in my summation, there's the inner rage that's threatening to come out. Oh, don't look at that. that yeah, no. Don't. That's mine. <laughs> I'm just writing down random song titles for later. Oh, okay. See? Bulls on Parade. I believe in... Well, that's supposed to be I Believe in Miracles, but I was going to write a parody for Supreme Commander, so it's I Believe in Overkill. Oh. Yeah. So, Brink's method of organization is to write random, sloppy, sticky, sticky notes all over the place. I know what they Which mean. Which is okay. It's I, fine. I know what they mean. As long as anybody it works else, for him. anybody else can come into my desk, and all they see is like a sticky note over here that says "Bulls on Parade," and then a sticky note over there is that says "Why we should teach fake Shakespeare." But apparently, I'm not allowed to look at them because that's a crime. Fake shear. <laughs> Sounds like a gardening tool. Billy May should sell that, but Billy Mays is dead. Depressed moment. That was a big mouth that got lost. And, That's yeah. what you should do. You should do infomercials. And for just nineteen ninety nine, you can pick up not one, not two, but three of these beautiful <laughs> ever sharp kitchen <laughs> knives. Order now. <laughs> Time for a career change. Look for Frank coming to a TV near you. Hey, if you know anybody who needs voiceover skills, I got them. <laughs> See, I told you I had the ego. <laughs> but you know, in today's world, it's all about self-esteem. So I guess, by these standards, I should be a total raging success. I'm unimpressed. And now I'm gonna go cry. <laughs> <laughs> you forget, roughly 87.5% of a guy's world is impressing the girl next to him. And 92% <laughs> of statistics are made up on the spot. Pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> I think I have an accurate viewpoint on this though, so being a guy and all. I'm so sorry that I wounded your ego. You don't look sorry. You guys can't see her, but she does not look Doesn't, sorry. Don't I sound sorry? I, I am truly shamed that I made Brink sad. It's a horrible thing. So sad. I'm never going to do this again. Ever. <laughs> okay. We should not lie. <laughs> of course, I guess it but could be. But it's the interwebs. What else do you do? <laughs> but, but everything on the internet is true. So that means if you lie and put the lie on the internet, it's true. <laughs> <laughs> look at look at look at all the news sites that post to Facebook all the time. Is that not basically proof of the conclusion that we've just reached? Well, it did, no, let's not get started on that. Social media is part of my job, so I was about to argue about the validity of a lot of content on social media, but it's just not worth it. Yeah. I'm just going to leave it at that. <laughs> all right. I think that's gonna about wrap it up for this time around. If you like this chat, you should totally hit the like button, possibly subscribe. I would actually love that if you would. And let us know if you wanna hear more of this. It's, it's like having an exclusive. You're basically hearing our dinner table conversation. See, this what is else the cool could thing. you want? We can do this every night. We have new material every single day. Because if we did it every night, they would end up being shorter, which might be good for you guys, because we would only cover a topic or two. Eh. I don't know. It depends. Tonight, Brink had to tell we me to shut up because he had to go do the yard before it got dark. So, I mean, <laughs> maybe we could do 20-minute <laughs> podcasts every night, but... Yeah, maybe. I think, I think we'll knock out a couple of these and see how they go. Let's get a feel for it. All right. So, we're going to wrap it up there. I have no idea what game is playing in the background, because right now we're just watching the squiggly line of the audio, <laughs> which is actually kind of entertaining, because you can do different tones of voice and different depths and different volume levels, and it makes the little thing go up and down, which is kind of fun, actually. Maybe. It's, it's just because he's an easily entertained, I, that's all. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe a little too easily entertained. But there will be a game behind this when you're seeing it. Yes. 
So hopefully it turned out well. Hopefully I nailed the length of the game because it's kind of hard to do that when I don't know the length. Cliffhanger! Oh, no. You have to wait for the next podcast to see the end of the game. I don't think so. I think I'll bullseye it. <clears throat> I'm just that good. We'll, we'll get it. Okay, okay. dear. So right now, the last nuke for the last ACU is going off right here. And we'll get to see how much of a liar I am. All right, we will catch you guys in the next video. As always, thank you so much for watching. And apparently Belle is just going to sit here quiet in her corner and let me wrap up. Yes, it's your channel. I'm not going to hijack it. Uh, I wouldn't do that. Of course not, dear. Of okay. course not. All right. Well, we will see you guys in the next one.